All right, fellas, we got. What up? Well, first of all, welcome to the uh, to the In the Round podcast. Got a great episode today. Got two of my good buddies, two of my favorite. Um, I guess I could say Red Door regulars. These are guys that oh, I yeah. bumped into at Red Door Live Oak that are here in the scene um, in country music and Western. They do a lot on social media. We got my boys Pierre Wilson and Rodney Smith. And uh, fellas, I appreciate you guys joining hey, us thanks today. For, thanks and, for uh, having us here. Yeah, it's and dope. Y'all just got back from probably one of the busiest weeks of your of your year where yeah. you guys go out to vegas and do the nfr yeah. thing what was that like you know they make and it's crazy you know being influencers and stuff but you know nfr is turning into something that has become more like influencer based right because it's, it's all about promotion i mean i hate to put it that way but um obviously it's it's about the finals rodeo and those events but there's more influences out there than it seems like there is cowboys sometimes but you have everybody from across the nation um competing in what is kind of like the end of the year rodeo and um dude it's just crazy it's nothing they turn you know i've I've been to vegas before but they turn it completely into a cowboy town and it's like literally like cowboys you grew up with just as far as i can see it's it's insane yeah yeah it was fun (laughs) (laughs) i'm on the other end of it it was like for me it was like my first big rodeo and like as we were talking about earlier, for somebody that's not really in that scene, to to feel accepted out there was kind of dope. Hell yeah. uh, that was pretty cool to see because, I mean, everybody was worried or asking me if I was worried about not fitting in because it's not my lifestyle, quote unquote. But uh, just the reaction that people got that I got out there from people just being like, yo, what you're doing is making a stand. Like yeah. you're what you're doing is dope. And the majority of people see certain people putting on a cowboy hat as respect because it's like you're embracing their lifestyle i talked about this on tiktok like i'm embracing your lifestyle because it's that dope and that's what getting that validation from actual bull riders did enough for me i was like clearly i'm doing something right yeah i think showcasing diversity is is the thing that we do um and a lot of people see it as kind of like a joke sometimes you know you get like a lot of negative comments that are like um like you're mocking this culture or whatever. You're not a cowboy. Like you're just Which is the furthest thing yeah. from the case. It exactly. is yeah. embracing yeah. the culture and we love this shit yeah. just as much as y'all do. Yeah. That's really what it is. Yeah. Yeah. For for me, like growing up cowboying and, and working horses and things like that. And I was you know, I was more of a radio cowboy than I was a cowboy. We raised like a couple, like, you know, cattle and things like that. And uh, but I was never like some three hundred head or thousand head fucking cattle farmer or rancher. But um you know, it's it's obviously it's not a joke for me. Like this has been the way I've been like my entire life, and but it is crazy to see what just kind of being of color and putting on a cowboy hat can do on social media. But like he said, man, going to NFR and seeing, um, getting I hate to use the word validation because I don't need anybody's validation. Yeah, but getting like so many supporters and kind of like watchers, fans, followers just come up to you. Just let you know what you're doing is being seen, and they they appreciate it. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Is it weird having eyes on you now? I know media wise, like we're kind of used to it. We have a similar background, Rod, of doing the radio thing and having people knowing your voice and this and that. But like going out there and and getting recognized, like in a way that a lot of my that a lot of our artist friends do when they're out on the road or doing doing the country music thing, like going out there and people taking notice of what the fuck y'all are doing yeah. like that's cool as hell what's yeah. what's it what's it like to kind of see that well i guess for me i like you said i've kind of been in it for a while now that i had to k- kind of watch what i did as stuff started to get bigger and bigger and bigger um but to see where it is now just kind of like shows me like how important social media actually is and uh, like a lot of people tend to be like you know if you're always on your phone you're doing you're like you're that person or or if you're so focused on social media you have nothing else to do with your life but realistically a lot of like jobs now are requiring all your social handles this right here is like (laughs) sitting at an office and being on a computer it's the same shit as the the google chromebook that they gave us in school like when we were kids or the um or the the office computer that our friends that have the quote-unquote normal lives have this is this is that for us it's practically a resume it is like it's your resume now yeah, and in, and in a lot of jobs, especially like you know, social media has created real jobs for people. It like, has. Like you know, I'm obviously an influencer. I've gotten like pretty decent at it. I make money doing it, but like it's created like real like 
you know, W2 paying jobs for people like social media marketing for businesses. And all they do is reach out to influencers all day. Like they like if there wasn't influencers, there would be like a lot less jobs. So yeah. it's like what we do is is a real thing. And like like being an NFR, I was like on the strip and I would. I lived in Vegas, so I was like trying to take. Okay, in. so you've done Vegas before. Yeah, yeah. Have you done, well, have you done Vegas before? Or is Not that your first time to party? Party. Yeah, I was a kid, so I never <laughs> I was there for my sister's basketball tournament. Yeah. So okay. Not the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I never got to like, um, like party there, but like I was on the strip trying to take in like old memories and shit, and um, I remember like I'd look up and we'd be at the end of the strip because I was like in my phone the whole fucking time, like trying to respond to emails and comments and shit. And I'm like, God damn, like I keep missing it. Like every time I'd get to the end of the strip, I'm like, <laughs> fuck, it's gone. <laughs> there it goes yeah. now. So did the influencer thing for you guys or, or the social media thing, was that a reflection of, of COVID and kind of the shit that we went into with 2020 where we had a lot more time on our hands? Or no. were you guys kind of diving into that, as I say, BC before COVID, like 2019, where you got, when did, when did the, the social media stuff, because I know TikTok's boom it was definitely kind of started for the same time for us. I feel like I feel like you worked at it a little bit harder than I did. For me, like growing up in a small town, like social media was just connect with people you went to high school with. Yeah. So like for him being in like radio and stuff, he was making connections before, but it, we didn't really have this I- ideology of being like influencers. Like we created a brand called like um, Country Influence, like Influence Country, and um, so we created that brand, and we were like literally looking at each other one night we were at fucking winners on the rooftop and we're like i was like i asked a girl i was like what if you looked at both of us what would you say that we did and she was like i I told him the name i was like it should be influence country and i was like is that that sounds fucking stupid i was so against it and i I looked at i looked at a girl i looked at a girl and i go if you looked at us and and tried to figure out what we do and like knowing what you know what would you say it was she was like you guys kind of like influence country I was like, exactly, motherfucker. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think for social media wise, for media people, we had to be in it. Yeah. But I don't know if a lot of people figured it out. Like, we we had to be there. So I just had a TikTok. I just had Instagram. I just had a Snapchat. Like, I would yeah. get on every social media outlet just because I needed to be there. Yeah. Now, I would say we didn't figure out TikTok until, like they say, once your big break happens, mm-hmm. then you figure it the fuck what out. Was, what was the big break so I, for you? We were both originally on TikTok, but yeah. my first video, my first ever TikTok video was High School Musical. Because I, like, I thought TikTok was comedic. I thought it was like a joke. It was like, I'm not going to go in there and be corny yeah. and go like flex my stomach and all this other stupid shit. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be I don't want to be on TikTok like that, right? That's not what you're trying it to wasn't not, what It wasn't what I wanted to be known as. Yeah. So when I went on there, I made a fucking video getting dressed to go to the dance hall back in San Antonio, mm-hmm. Texas. And the shit blew up. Like, it was negative comments, positive comments, but it blew up. Yeah. And I was like, is this what people want to see? Like, I've always been in the fashion. Out- outfit of the night. Outfit. Yeah. I was going to the dance hall. I'm like, have, like, yeah. but also your social assets. I had a Dos in my hand. I was in San Antonio. I was going to the San Antonio local dance hall. So, like, everybody was like, oh, that's that. Was that, oh, ca- you're drinking was that, that. Cowboys? Cowboys. Yeah. Oh, so, everybody's been like, there. that's Cowboys. Yeah. Oh, you're in San Antonio. Oh, those jeans. Oh, they're too small. What the fuck are you wearing? There was a multiple different things. Then I kept doing that. Yeah. And then I started seeing that people liked fashion. And then I met him and I was like, yo, because I had been seeing his TikToks. Yeah. And I was like, yo, go make a video of you getting dressed to go to the dance hall. <laughs> you probably looked at him like, what are you talking about? Well, like, <laughs> going, like going back to what we were saying earlier, man, like Ronnie's kind of had like the whole media aspect locked down before I met him. I was a fucking cowboy. I was Ron Bulls when the army made me move down here to Fort Campbell. And that's how I met him is at a dance hall up there, fucking electric cowboy. Two of the and only black people in the building. Let's we say, had like, to, let me say that. Back then, <laughs> back I swear then, to God. Yes. Yeah. I swear to God. I've been to electric cowboy. That is, and I didn't know him, yeah. right? Like, and he had, you know, this like South Texas kind of like style of dance and shit. And I'm like East Coast, like two stepping, like nerdy as shit, hopping around. <laughs> and um, I had just learned how to like one step as soon as we come here because it started getting popular. But anyway, enough about dancing. So like me and him are the only two black guys in the bar. So it's kind of like rivals. At first, you're like, who the, f- who the fuck is this black guy? Like, I'm the only black guy. I'm, there's, there's not a- <laughs> that was like the first joke that we have. He's like, who is this black guy here? And then I went up to him and I was like, who are you? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but it was a joke. It was yeah, all jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we had about like two weeks of this town's not big enough for the both of us. And then um, finally we like, I don't know why we met each other, but finally we did like some drinks together and shit. And that's where it all started, man. And it, it was a long run of like realizing that we both had something different. Even though I was a cowboy who didn't have anything about social media, like my senior superb in high school was best dressed. That was 13 years ago, you know? 
And so I've always been a really well dressed cowboy. I'll, I'll just put it that way. And um, so yeah, he he did the little video on TikTok or whatever, and he's like, "You need to do this." And I'm like, "Man, I'm not trying to get laughed at by the people I grew up with." And um, I did it, and it it blew up. I think bigger than the one he did. Yeah. And so that was basically literally the same time we both started this shit. And for me, I don't know why, but my fashion resonates with like just cowboy culture a little bit harder because like I said, I've been doing it forever. And so, yeah, it just took off from there. One of my favorite posts that I like mm-hmm. is when you, I like when you guys go downtown, go on Broadway and you're walking with the, with the, with the, with the case of boots yeah. and you're just, you're walking like you're like, you're just strolling business. You yeah. got the shades on. Yeah. Like I'm not in. I'm not. I, I dressed up a little bit. I, I figured. Let me break out this pearl snap that I somehow acquired from the road. I forget where. Yeah. I got a new. I got a pair of Tacovas, so I actually got shit kickers. You know. But, shout out to Tacovas. Yeah, shout out to Tacovas. Um, <laughs> For real. And, yeah. Um, and um, like. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, we're all in them. Okay. Hell yeah. Now, what's so these boots right here? What are these? So oh, I have a I have buddies that work there, mm. so I know these are square toe, but yeah. these are what? Just basic kind of cowboy boots. Well, you would call it a roper. Um, a square roper? toe. That's. You see how your heel kind of starts flat and it doesn't have an arch yeah. at the um, the beginning of the heel there. That arch is usually, see, this is like not really much of an arch because it's a yeah. zip-up boot. Those, I think, are the, are those Zanes too? No, there's uh, the Dukes. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, we both have on Roper style boots right now. Yeah. But um, it's more of a, it's more of a comfort boot, something for people to get down to rope a little bit easier when you're calf roping and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's more of like a more foot on the ground, more foot placement type of boot. Anyway. Yeah. You know, I know a lot about boots. And well, that's shit, what I'm saying. But... <laughs> I don't know about boots. I want my people to learn about boots. Yeah. And you guys know the whole the whole fashion thing. Like, like even the style of like the hats that you guys wear. Like the hats. There's all these like hats that are made by by different companies or or different designers yeah. and have different materials. Some are like felt. Some are straw. Some are wool. Some are this. Yeah. Like how. Is it like seasonal kind of stuff with your yeah, attire, or do you mix is. it up on the occasion? Some might, some might argue work? with you on that one. <laughs> really? Because yeah. it depends on where you, oh, yeah, where you live. Because Texas yeah. is always hot. Yeah. So felt season for them may be a little bit more delayed than it would for straws, yeah. like like other places. Yeah, you know, it's, um, what is it, Labor Day to um, whatever day. I can't remember right now. But, um, you know, you have your, your, your felt seasons, but... Like you said, in Texas, it'll be warmer. Like People are going to make fun of you if it's 80 degrees outside. It doesn't matter if it's felt season or not. You'll probably 80 be degrees outside. your damn ass off. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just natural exactly. selection yeah. at that point. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, but it's it's more acceptable to wear a uh, a uh, felt hat in warm weather than, in, during felt season than it is to wear like a felt hat in the summer. Even if it is a little bit colder, for some reason, it's just you look really stupid if you're. Yeah, anything in the yeah. summertime is. Yeah, if you're wearing if you're wearing a felt in the summertime, you just look stupid. So, how many hats do each of y'all own? Oh, I sure. gotta ask because you guys have to have collected. Oh, what the, kind of hats are we talking about? I'm talking about like those, like I, oh, I, like, I, I, I like I have like I'm sure baseball caps. You guys got a ton of those too and stuff, and like the trucker hats and the the the, the hats with like the ropes on them are really popular. But how many like cowboy lids do you think you own? Um, <laughs> shit, I. You know, I have a lot from like sponsors and stuff, and some of them are like shitty, and then they just kind of like rack up. And so I probably have like a hundred, but a um, hundred cowboy hats. Yeah, I probably have a hundred. What do you hats, keep? All, do you have just like a closet of just stuff no, that you guys man. will get. From... My house is small, and like my office is like my bedroom, and like only only people know that are like the ones in my live feed. Yeah, but like, um, yeah, my my house is literally like my bedroom is literally like my office, my closet, everything, and so. I just stack them up. They're literally like in my corner, just like, like all the way tower. to the roof. Yeah. So you no just shit. like you flip them inside the like brim, and you flip them inside the like crown or whatever, and you just keep stacking them. So the the hat on the bottom is getting that smushed like hell, but <laughs> yeah, I ain't got, I ain't got a hundred. I ain't got a hundred cowboy hats because I wear fedoras and stuff like that too. So okay, yeah. All of like the Travis Austins and the Mike Ryan's and stuff like that. Like yeah, I got, Travis Austin, are they based here in Nashville? Travis's, yeah. Travis's. Mm-hmm. But so is Mike. He's like a small. He's like a smaller, like in the house. Cool. Yeah. Have you guys seen? Has that been? That's probably a big thing for you guys being in town too. Is there are there is the fashion presence in Nashville too. People talk about Music City, but there's a lot more to Nashville yeah. than just country music. You've got a comedy scene here. You've got other styles of music, yeah. and you've got a, a a growing fashion scene, especially when it comes to the Western attire. It like is, you guys sport. It is interesting seeing that. Like Nashville has its own sense of like fashion, like with the Travis Austin hats or 
the Mike Ryan stuff, it's uh, it's very different. It's not me at all. So it's interesting to, to see that I actually work here, you know, like yeah. that like my thing works here because his style definitely was more like Nashville and like I feel like more accepted in Nashville. I came out here and kind of like broke the mold a little bit. And um, yeah, it's interesting to see that it actually works because like I, I've yet to own like one of those hats and you know one of those like crazy fashion hats. You get a lot of you get a, <laughs> what, what you crazy fashion. Crazy? Hats? What do you mean? By, what, do you, what do you mean by crazy fashion? So we talking like tombstone, like yeah, like, like that kind. You know, of, like, like the I actually try to wear a flat brim. Like my followers will like they talk shit about me about it, but like. Um, yeah, like the flat brim hats with like the custom work and stuff. Like I, I appreciate all the girls and like guys who do that shit because there's a lot out there and they're like more viral than I am. And um, yeah, it's it's a cool thing. It's definitely art, but it is like it's not cowboy. Okay, so you're more like cowboy, and you're more like you you do the cowboy thing, but you you're yeah. you're a little it's like a, a little mix more, of, just a mix of everything. You'll, yeah. you'll mix in whatever you feel like will look good. Do you guys are you guys at the point now where you're turning down deals where you're getting hit up oh, yeah. so much oh, by yeah. different things? Yeah. yeah. Then see the thing. Let me let me touch on this though. Like, yeah. I want to go a little bit back. So a lot of people, when he first started blowing up like to think that there was a competition between us. Mm. Uh, let, I want to touch on this because so many people think that it's a versus. Like, we'll always get comments like, oh, Rodney looks better than you. Pierre looks better than you, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And we have never, ever saw a competition. Yeah. No. Like, because you guys, are, you guys are buddies. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, even when we, when we first started, like, we knew our areas. And we knew who was better at what. And that's yeah. why we started the brand together is because it was like, I have stuff I can yeah. offer you. You have stuff you can offer me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of my Western style is heavily influenced by a lot of shit that he was doing. Like, same thing that he said about the media. Like, we were talking about it the other day. We were joking about it because we were bullshitting. We were drunk as hell. But, like, <laughs> I didn't wear Wranglers damn near as much as I have now. Yeah. But that's because when I started getting brand deals and they were like, hey, we're going to send you a pair of Wranglers, make mm -hmm. a video. And yeah. it was like, damn, these are these have been comfy the, for the whole time, and I never knew. Yeah. I used to talk shit about him when he like his skinny jeans and shit. <laughs> Everybody did. Remember, it was bad. I it was bad. I, the I had a bad face. <laughs> like yeah. I didn't understand too much of the Western style, but what I was wearing was like, oh, that's different because he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. So when I was wearing skinny jeans with a cowboy hat, people were like, oh shit, yeah. we can do that because yeah. because Ra Rodney's doing it. For the record, they weren't that skinny. <laughs> They were slim fit, but yeah. they looked tight. When I look back at pictures, I'm like, Ew. Well, there, there were guys in Nashville that are country artists that have worn skinnier jeans oh, than yeah. what you oh, were yeah. wearing. Oh, 100%. Yeah, for sure. Fuck them, they're leggings yeah. at yeah. that point. You're, but, super, uh, they, you're superstars. They do it, and they make a statement. Like that's, They make it popular. They that's really what do. Nashville yeah. is, though. It's like when you're trying to be a trendsetter, yeah. you got to stand 10 toes behind what, you wanna, what you're trying to do. Right. So mm -hmm. like all the hate that you say we're getting from being black and in country, yeah. right? you can either cry about it and go stick at the bottom, or you can continue to do what the fuck you want to do, make a statement, and people are going to start following you. Yeah, and that's yeah. what, that's yeah. why I think we both excelled at what we're doing is because we don't care. Yeah, we make 100%. jokes about those comments. Yeah, because it's funny. And those videos do great. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like yeah. what, it's great content. what do you think your TikTok comment is? Why do you think your TikTok comment is going to make me go throw away all my cowboy boots yeah. that I just got sent? Well, they want their they want their five seconds of fame. These guys they'll get like a hundred likes on a negative comment. Hundred, like hundreds. I, it happens all the time. The number one comment on most of my videos is some shit that's like, still ain't no cowboy. You know, something stupid. That that comment will be like the number one liked comment on my videos. But they want their five seconds of fame. The reason they say that is because they feel like their comment resonates with other haters or other like negative yeah. people. And what's funny is yeah. that the way the algorithms work, the more comments you have, and oh, the they're more just response, helping. They're yeah. just they're just fueling yeah. y'all's fire of growth. That's all they're and doing. What y'all are trying yeah. to and do, and that's why just I, the best part. And that's why I tell people when they want to argue with people on TikTok comments, I'm like, try this. Go respond in the dumbest way possible, and then just see how much better yeah. it goes for you. Because then yeah. the people that hate. We'll change their mind. They'll be like, wow, oh, yeah. that was a great comment. I'm going to follow you. And then they'll just follow you and be like, you know, I respect your response. Oh, yeah. You got to kill him with kindness. You just man. make a joke about it. It's, <laughs> yeah. so, it's so much easier. But that concept works for so much in life. You know, like you're always going to have things against you. Right. And you can either cry. I'm sorry to say, yeah. but you can either cry about it or you can like find a way to make them read their words. Yeah. That's, that's literally everything in life. Yeah. And... I remember earlier you were talking about like how people see us in the media. I want to go back to this. I want to go back to the Morgan Wallen thing. Okay. 
And I want to touch on this for the simple fact that as a media person, uh, when I was doing radio at the time, yeah, I had two audiences at the time that were saying, what are you going to do? Right? You have the African-American community that says, oh, this, your country music star just said the N-word. And then you have the other country music fans that are like, what are you going to say? Because he did 19 weeks in number one from saying the N-word. So it's like, you're going to pick and choose your battle? What size are you going to lean towards? Yeah. As a person in that situation, I said nothing. Why? Because you have to pick and choose your battles. Yeah. Why would I pick a, a certain side yeah. to a mass audience that is going to ride behind him regardless of what Radio Rod Rodney Smith says? But not what anybody says. Right? No matter says. what not nobody says, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Any, whatever, right? Put Bobby, anybody, Bobby Bones, whoever. It's a defenseless thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, and then you're not doing your community no justice because this stuff happens all the time. So do I look better to my community because I overcame that to show people that may think odd against us that we, we, we belong here? That we belong in the room? Or do you want to go cry and be like, yo, he said the N-word. Like, let me go fucking pout in the corner. Do and then anything. lose all the respect from the people that are like, if yeah. you can overcome a negative comment, then you are special. Yeah. And with that, it's such a higher level that's like, why even let it affect you? Yeah. Like, at this point, we deal with it directly. Like, I deal with, like, people calling me the N-word and telling me that I should be, like, picking cotton in their field all the time. Jeez. You know? I Brutal. Did, so, like, why even let something at a level like that affect you? Yeah. I, I've met Morgan Wallen, you know, several times, and, um, you know, I, I feel about him a certain way. I think he's a great guy, and I think <clears throat> he just got caught lacking, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, You know, you you can't let things affect you at a level like that, and I feel like so many, we that's what we do in, in America today, under... No, I can't get into that. But <laughs> you, I, if you want, you say whatever the hell you want, Pierre. But uh, that's y'all are the guests. This yeah. is y'all's episode of the In the Round podcast. But that's just something we do today, man. We let things affect us that don't even affect. That has nothing to do with us. Yeah, I don't give a fuck what the fuck somebody says to. I I can't even care what people say to me today because, like you were asking earlier. You know, you have to watch what you say and how you respond and all these things, and you do. That's why I respond with kindness. Sometimes I do want to, you know, tell them off, tell them yeah. to fuck themselves. But you can't do that because that's the end of your career. Yeah, yeah. The people so, are looking to ruin you. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta know that. You gotta yeah. understand that, and you gotta maneuver yeah. very, very differently. Oh yeah, you think, and and that's the thing. You know, I can't imagine how many millions of positive comments I have, but you let those little negative, negative ones. Like some people, you know how long they probably sit behind a keyboard and they're like. Yeah, he should probably go fuck his cousin or something. Like, say some crazy shit. Yeah. Like, how long they think about that? They're probably there for ten minutes. Like, no, nah, that's not good. Delete, delete, delete. I should say it this way. He's really gonna hurt when I push this button. Yeah. And um, you know, there's so many times you want to respond negatively, and you just you just can't. You got to think of those those times. They actually get a response out of you because you actually have to take the time and think about how you're gonna respond positively. Yeah. You just can't let that slide. Yeah, yeah. And, there, and there's and there's quite a few like folks in in the in the community. There's there is there are a lot of a lot of people of color, a lot of a lot of folks, a lot of Latino folks. Like there's it's country music is as diverse as it's ever been, and the diversity's yeah, always 100%. been there, but it hasn't been showcased like yeah. especially in the city of Nashville. Yeah, like it it. It, so that's why it's it's a really cool time for you guys to be doing what you're doing and yeah. for social media to be doing what it's doing. And just in general, yeah. it's kind of like a perfect storm of like the, the 2020s right now. A yeah. great time to be here and a great yeah. time to be doing what, what the fuck you want to do and yeah. standing up to the haters because yeah. you can do that. You're, yeah. you, have, you have the power to do that. Yeah. What's what's what's. Are there, who are some other folks like within the community that are kind of like in y'all's crew, or do you guys well, kind of roll as like a duo? Going back to that, and I think we're gonna have the same answer on this because we've literally we as as much as we progressed, people, you know, they tend to phase out because you don't want to help them, and it's not that you don't want to help them; it's that you can't. We're still helping ourselves, but as much as we've grown, we've always found each other, and um. Makes me almost tear up. But, like, <laughs> um, we'll always have each other as far as this goes because we started it together. And that's yeah. the thing. Like, people think they started it with us. You fucking didn't. Well, it's because you, yeah. you're putting in the work. You have yeah. the passion. You got to have the passion yeah. and you got to have the work ethic. And yeah. you got to be able to go through the times of putting out the content yeah. and nobody responding it oh, to yeah. get to the point that y'all yeah. are at now. You got to keep going. But it's also putting your pride to the side. I think that's yes. another big yes. thing. Yes, that's a big thing for that, sure. That it's like seeing people in in – what is the word? Seeing people in competition with their friends. Yeah. I never understood that from the get-go. Mm. I when we first started off doing this with the massive group that we had, oh, yeah. I was always the one watching. I was yeah. always the one being coachable. If you said that I was 
if people were staying out till 4 a.m., I'm staying out till 4 a.m., but I wasn't going to be the dickhead doing the dickhead shit that they were doing, yeah. right? I was going to be with them. I wasn't going to speak against them, but I wasn't going to like, be them yeah. is what I want to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people being in competition with their friends was just weird to me, yeah. right? And that's why we always talked one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Like anytime it was like something was happening, I'm texting him like, why is this why is this person doing this? Yeah. Like why? Like what yeah, is we the point? always we and that's what I'm saying, man. Like we started this together. Like a lot of people feel like they did with us, but no, me and him like from the fucking dirt, you know? And don't get me wrong, like we all we were all paid in our way individually before we got to where we are today, me and him. But when it comes to the social media, the TikTok and the success that we've had, we started together. And a lot of people feel like they did with us, and they, they didn't. And so if, if somebody does us wrong, we're talking about it to either one of, you know, to either one of us. We're talking yeah. about it. And our group is, is that way. And we still have, you know, good people, like, that we're around all the time. I love Willie Jones. He's another guy Will, who's... Dude, me yeah. and Willie have had some times together. Yeah. He's, he's 420 friendly yeah. like me, me and Willie. <laughs> yeah. I, I, love, I love me some Willie yeah. Jones. Yeah. That's one of my favorite guys. Yeah, it's like, that's like my brother, man. And he's another guy who's influenced country heavily. And, and, dealt, uh, and dealt with a lot of hate. And and modest, a lot. Modestly. A lot. Yeah, modestly too. Yeah, and one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And that's the thing about him. That's, that's his biggest weakness is being so damn nice and humble. Like, he will take anybody in and g hang out with anybody. Yeah. Uh, he's just a great guy, man. But he never lost the vision. That's yeah. that's another thing. Like, yeah. when you see the way he dresses, you see the way he acts, like, yeah. people are going to hate against them. But what you can't take away from him is his talent. Mm -hmm. You put them in front of a microphone, mm -hmm. and he's wowing people mm -hmm. just like that. Yeah. Same thing with Jimmy Allen. Like, yeah. Jimmy Allen started the trend of do-rag on stage with four chains. Oh, yeah. Right? And all of these yeah. people are like, what the fuck? You can't do that. That's not country music. It's and like, that look. It's like, I'm from Delaware. Yeah. I grew up just outside of Philly. Yeah. I'm going to be me. Y'all want Jimmy Allen? I'm going to give you but Jimmy But he never Allen. had to shove that down people's throat, no. right? Yeah. No. All he did was make country music, but in the style that he wants to do it in. And now look where he's at. Yeah. CMA award winner, ACM award winner. <sighs> yeah. Like he's, at the, and that's what it takes, right? You have certain people in the industry that will force it. Yeah. Right, and it does make us look bad. Yeah, right. You got to know what you're up against, but and there's also people on the opposition side that understand what they're up against, yeah. and that's why they're at the level that they are now is because they know how to maneuver this industry. It is a smart industry to maneuver. Yeah, right. It's not that it simple. Is. You have it. I mean, like, you know, I hate to make it sound that way, but we have like difference. You know, we have something that we can exploit. But I feel like a lot of guys are modest about it. And, um, like, you have so many people doing it. You, you know, you got Shy Carter. You got Lathan. You got um, so many people that are really diverse that people don't even know about because they do it modestly. Um, you know, I met um, Parker McCollum's mom um, at a show at Billy Bob's or whatever. And uh, we talked about Charlie Pride. And she told me more about Charlie Pride than I ever knew in my life. And if you don't know who Charlie Pride is, look him up. <laughs> yeah. But there's so many, oh God, there's so many of them that just did it modestly and paved the way for what country music is today that we don't credit. And um, even Cowboyin, Fred Whitfield, um, Bill Pickett. Like you just have so many, oh God, it's so many of them, man. And it's like we don't even know. It's it's insane to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's And it's, it's something that um, – that I remember seeing like in within working working in radio too and within media. Like you do you what what's your experience been like doing that stuff, Rod? Because you're with you what's your who's your current company with now? You're with Amazon. All right, now? all right. We taking shots or do you have what you We're saying get, whatever you, you want to say. Serious? Okay, I want you, I want you to be serious. Like cause you you got your media start you said in Kansas. I saw okay. So I went right? to a small school in Kansas. No radio no radio station. I had to figure everything out on my own. Right, and you're in Kansas. Kansas is, is middle a, of nowhere. Fucking it, it's Kansas. a it's a, it's a state that is definitely a little bit different than say yes. doing it in and say a place like in Texas where you have Houston or San yeah. Antonio or New York or like not a huge market. Yeah. So I mean, growing up in Texas, I understood the country lifestyle. Like I like, I'm not rodeo, not the rodeo lifestyle, but like I was out there hunting, I was out there fishing, like like. But I don't tell people that now because I don't need. That validation to see no, like I'm country. You right? know, you know how you grew up. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I don't need to tell people that. So Kansas City, I started in radio. I mean, uh, I went to school for broadcasting, but the school I had, the, I went to a small school that had no radio station. Right. So once I graduated, I was like, I want to go do radio, but I need to figure it out on my own. 
right? So I went to two two radio schools in Boston, one in Kentucky, right? So they were like, it's basically just an institute program where they put you in front of people that you want to network with. And if you get a job, you get a job. If you don't, go by. I mean, that's it, yeah. right? So I wanted it that bad. And I never accepted a job that was not country music. I was asked to go into hip hop. I was told by my teacher that, are you sure you want to go into country music? I was offered multiple pop stations and I told every last job, even though I was supposed to never say no, I didn't want to be anywhere besides country music because talking about music, the best hosts are passionate about what they're talking about. Amen. That's for anybody. Amen. Right? So if you want me to go fake talk about pop or hip hop, it's not going to work. <laughs> like you, you can read bullshit through somebody's voice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when I was at these institutes and they're like, well, what do you know about country music? Blah, 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 blah. And I start hitting them with this, 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 and that. And they're like, wait, where are you from? And then it's like, oh, you're from Texas. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Why did you need to know where I was from? It has nothing to do to with being from yeah. Texas. It doesn't. It, it doesn't at all, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then I came over here, and my first offer was Cumulus. Yep. Right? Cumulus wanted to put me in this little fucking box that I was not, right? With Cumulus here, I'm not going to say names. I mean, I've already said their fucking name, but they, <laughs> they, I did the street team for two and a half years. Every on-air personality that came to that building said, how are you not on air yet? You are an African-American that knows what the hell he's talking about in country music. You are not faking this. Not even the African-American thing. You're a guy you, that knows about country music and, knows and has it, years. Knows yeah. it. But yes. like the, for, the love of, for the love of country music documentary for Amazon, right? That, that came out in April. Yeah. I was in it. Oh, I brought that. They did my scene in that radio station. I brought that clout from Amazon documentary into that radio station, and that radio station could never give me anything back. All I ever asked was for an opportunity to get a chance to be on air. I was staying up till 2 a.m. doing the air checks, like yeah. we talked about, grinding, sitting in on morning shows, 6 o'clock in the morning, then going to go serve right after that, then going to go do the street team. Like I wanted it that bad, yeah. and they never wanted to give me a shot. So COVID happened, and they were like, okay, well, you know, we can't do promotions, so we're just going to, whenever we get stuff up and running again, we'll have you come back. And I said, okay. But then again, COVID gave me my biggest start because at this point it's like, now you need to figure it out, right? Are you going to wait and sit on your ass for a job to come to you, or are you going to go figure something out? So then I started the podcast. My podcast ended up blowing up accidentally. I just went on there to talk just to stay comfortable on a microphone yeah, during be, COVID. To be ready for just when that, to be ready when that shift for when my along. shot came yep. and then opportunities started to come, right? Bobby Bones liked my tweet. I tweeted about it and my job said, wait, are you considering going to iHeart? Cause Cumulus and I heard arrivals. Yeah. So he was like, are you considering going to iHeart? I said, what do you mean? Then I started playing the hard the hardball game. And I was like, if you, if you guys want me to stay, I just need to start seeing opportunities. Right. And then they started trying to offer me, to sign the podcast, they wanted Cumulus wanted to sign our podcast for t for my promotion salary, and I said no. No, that promotion salary I said, for, fuck the, no. for those back home promotion no. salary ain't nothing. Like you want me to go on my own time and make these podcasts that are blowing up for your ten dollars an hour? No. Yeah. So then I ended up saying I got to be done with this radio station, and I figured it out on my own. Right. Then I started to go in to go trying to start interviewing artists shows i was trying to start another podcast i'm literally dabbling in everything at this point and you're and you're, and you're finding what works and you don't find what works literally. until you fail at some shit literally That's, yeah you just gotta keep my shooting. mentor and this is the biggest quote because i have it tattered on me like but my mentor gave me this quote and it was it, he told me at the beginning he was like go stay relevant in everybody's business mm -hmm. and for the longest time i had no idea what that meant right time started going and then i started djing in national palace then I started a dance crew. Then I started teaching DJing. Then I became an artist interviewing. Then I did podcasts. Then TikTok came. And then it started to come to me. I was like, go be relevant in, in everybody's business. I literally just did yeah. 10 different jobs that I had no idea. I all, came to Nashville. All in one city. All in one city. I came to Nashville to be in radio. And then I ended up doing all these other different things. And now I'm full time as a creative director, talent producer yeah. on major markets. Yeah. This is something I never, I didn't plan to come to Nashville to be working with Amazon and CMAs and Apple and all this shit. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that's like what I was telling you earlier. It's man. That's what you it's all just, about. Yeah. You gotta just, yeah. ne like, not say no to an extent, but 
how bad do you want it in a city that you're either watching people that have made it or people that are trying to make it? But where do you fit into that? Amen. It's such an interesting town, man, because like I said, when I come here, I made that offer on that 36-acre farm. All I wanted to do, like my my claim to fame was going to be starting my own rodeo out here. Like that's what I wanted to do. It's like maybe a little jackpot in my backyard where people could come rope, ride some bulls. But um, like I said, I lost that I lost that offer on the house, and um, so I met Rodney. We were dancing, like dancing was literally like the start of all this. Like we would dance for music videos and stuff like that, which and, I never knew was a thing. And shout out to the to the to the dance halls that are here in Nashville that oh, yeah. give an opportunity for anybody that wants oh, yeah. to dance in this town. Yeah, you yeah. got a few of them, right? Where's oh, yeah. the big Natural looking, Palace, yeah. Whiskey Dicks, and Murfreesboro, Electric Cowboy, in Clarksville. In Clarksville. Yeah, yeah. You got Cotton Eye Joe about four hours out in Knoxville. Oh, I've, we've done shows out there. That yeah. place is rad. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot yeah. of places. Dude, it's, it's very interesting, man. Because if it wasn't for the dance halls, for first of all, we would have never met. And then we would have never danced in music videos and things like that. And if it wasn't for dancing in music videos, I wouldn't have got started in fashion. It's like what he was saying, man. You just got to keep, it's not really putting your eggs in different baskets, but it's like keep an open mind and listening to what people are saying and where you're needed, right? You can't turn anything down if you need something. You know, if somebody's like, hey, man, I need you to dance in a music video, I don't give a fuck if it's for free. Back then, I was doing it. Now, it's damn near $3,000 to get me to do anything. <laughs> Go, <laughs> but <laughs> fucking yeah, man. It's like you like you said, man. It really started from diversifying what we were capable of doing, and if it was within the country realm, if it was in within the path that I wanted to be on, that's what I was doing. I, shit, I was yeah. working the horses still <laughs> for free, you know, because I wanted to be around horses. I was yeah. uh, I was dancing for free. I was styling people for free. If it wasn't for all of that. And me building up my confidence, because it takes a lot of confidence to to be in the media. Don't to thing. do uh, trust, yeah. yeah like yeah. my confidence has grown since I've come yeah. to Nashville and started doing this shit. Yeah. Like it, you do need a lot oh, of man, confidence. It, it to takes do so that. much confidence. Like I was, like I, bro, he's seen me do an interview before and talk to people. Like I fucking, like the way that I started at social media was like what you were saying earlier, like you know twenty second bits or whatever. Like okay, like you ask a question, let me think about that real quick. I'll think of a response, rehearse it in my head, then I'll drop it. That's how I was, man. Like I couldn't go straight shot for shot talking to people. Like I was just people don't understand like if you know me from home, you know, like all of North Carolina knows. Like I was just a guy who wanted to ride horses and I didn't talk to nobody. Yeah. And um thankfully, you know, Ronnie got me out of my comfort zone. This town got me out of my comfort zone. Accepting things just I really didn't say no. Yeah. If anybody ever wants to know how the fuck you get to where we're at, not saying we're so far, you're probably way bigger than we are, but everybody is special. Everybody is talented. Everybody's got their own unique thing that makes them who they are. Nobody's the same. Um, the first thing you got to stop doing is trying to be like anybody else because you're not. Yeah. <coughs> You can't yeah. you can't do that. You're not like anybody like, else. Like them racehorses, you got to put your blinders on yeah. and focus on exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You got to put your blinders on and focus on you. And the minute you do that, the minute you focus on, I tell everybody, all my friends back home who are like, "How'd you do it, man? How are you doing what you're doing?" I dude, I fucking I got to a place where I was confident and I didn't care about what anybody else thought. I didn't know anybody in this town. So it's like I got to a place where you don't have to worry about what people think about you cuz they don't fucking know you. You don't know them. Yeah. You have to get to that place where you don't care what anybody thinks about you and get outside of your comfort zone and create that kind of content. What what who are you when nobody else is watching when when you're just fucking by yourself? Yeah. I don't care if there's 100 people by you. You're by yourself. Who are you right now? Fucking be that person on social media, be that person in life. Ask those questions. If it doesn't work, it doesn't fucking work. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Amen. Yeah. You talk about content. You guys have gotten to do some some cool Interviews, some cool hangs recently. Two that, two that really stand out. You getting to hang out with Cody Johnson. Man. I know that's a huge deal for you being a Texas guy, media guy. And then you at fucking, I think it was Marathon Music Works. You're in a room with, the, when I saw the video, I was like, what the fuck? You're hanging out with fucking Gravy, <laughs> with fucking Young Gravy. So yeah. how, what's that been like getting to meet different different people? And what were those experiences like for each of you guys? What was, what was, 
Rod, like, imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine you tell eight years ago, fucking, you oh tell God, young dude. Rod, hey, you're gonna be hanging out with Kojo. You're gonna have a, a, a you're gonna build a, a friendship with him and his team and get to interview him. Yeah. What was that like? Man, I think for me, Kojo is the George Strait to people now. Yes. Like, Kojo mm-hmm. is my George Strait. Mm-hmm. And, man, it's just, I think the thing about Kojo, regardless of like where I'm from, because I know he's big in Texas, but, he has a very similar mindset to how I am, right? He does whatever the fuck he wants to do and doesn't care about the hate that he gets back from it. If you've been to a Kojo concert, you understand, like, the hate that he was getting for the military veteran shout out all every concert. Right? He says what the fuck is on he his mind. He says what he wants. But I mean, but He's what, a he, He's what a he says man. is real, though. You know what I'm saying? It's not the media that influences you, it's not what you see on the news. It's, it's, it's way more than that, right? So. I've always been a Kojo fan for who he was out off the stage, on the stage, and then what he stands for. So he has always been, he is way more deserving of what he's getting now, right? He should have been, been getting is, that shit five bro, years he ago. He should have been getting it. Got, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm eight, with you. Eight, ten years yeah. ago, shit. I mean, but <laughs> to like to see where he is now, I just feel like I'm growing with him. Right, I don't want to sound cliche because like I'm a big Cody Johnson fan. Yes. Right? It's no secret. Yeah. But like I feel like I'm growing with him as far as a fan and getting to interview him. I don't even know if I could put words together in my head. What was the first thing you said to him? I like you walk. You walk. To, you guys are in the same room. What's the first see, thing? Okay, he so said? here's the thing about that. You're looking and you're looking down. And Cody is not the tallest in stature. Yeah. He's a cowboy. The thing about the media industry is you cannot fangirl. Oh, right? trust me, I know. No matter yeah. how yeah. bad the inside of you wants to fucking scream, yes. you have to keep yeah. your chest out. I, mm. I got I got thrown in as an intern to the to the Yankee Stadium press room to interview Garth Brooks when I was like 19 years old. Yeah. And I had to not be like, holy shit, holy exactly. shit. Yeah. Exactly. Because you have to you have to act like you belong. Have here. that professionalism. Right? There so, is that there. And that's how I got my first start at the ACM Awards in Vegas last year. Yeah. Right? They were like, I wasn't even I wasn't even full time with the job that I was at yet. Yeah. Amazon was like, hey, um, we need somebody to go out there to interview all these artists. Um, and you seem like a good fit. Go do it. The same week of the awards, I said, Man, flew out there, interviewed every artist, and they were like, Are you like, are you okay? Like, you made that look so easy. And I was just like, it's because I belong here. I was waiting for my shot, right? I just needed somebody, and that's that's for I've been, so. I've been doing reps. Yeah, for that, like years. that's for so many people in the industry that waits for their shot. Like as soon as you get it, like we're ready. Everybody's yeah. ready. As yeah. soon as you give them right. their first start, those people bet I'm here. Yeah. I always used to say the 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 thing about interviews is the hardest part about interviews is getting to the interview. The interview itself is not hard. No. It's getting to the interview. It's the yeah. trying to get that job, trying to get to the interview has always been yeah. the hardest thing. But as soon as you get there, it's your time to shine. So you're going to nut up and get it done or are you going to freeze? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So when Cody came, I mean, my whole staff knew I was a big Cody fan. So I was, they, they knew, like, they were like, hey, can you know, calm down? Can you do this? Can you do this? I'm like, <laughs> chill out. I got it. Right? He came in. I had already done my research. I knew I knew exactly what I was going to ask him. So this is easy. I'm about to just lay this out. So many people with Cody Johnson interviews or with any interviews, they ask the generic questions, the music questions. What's going on with your music? Where'd you come from? Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. I'm trying to get into the nits and grits because I'm going to take a shot here. Right? So my, I, I asked Cody about, you know, um, why are you getting overlooked as a Texas artist in Nashville? First, he, he stopped for a second. He's like, didn't know what to say, right? Because asking a different question that's going to really push your answer is going to catch you off guard. And that's a question he's probably been wanting to answer for a long Bro, that's, fucking that was, time. That was one of the questions that I, that I asked. I asked him about that. I asked him, how does it feel like finally getting like your breakout into the Nashville scene? And then the last one I asked, I said, I know you get a lot of fucking hate for your military shout outs. I said, my family's military, so I understand exactly what, like, what you were going through and all the, the social media stuff. I, and then I, I, I forgot what I said, but I asked him a question about that and he said, holy shit, nice question. Like in the middle of it, like on camera, like I'm hoping when they put it out, I want the raw footage. But he was like, holy shit. <laughs> And this is Cody Johnson, right? This is one like, of your this heroes. This is to everybody yeah. who says I'm fake country. Like I have, if not a major fucking country guy right across from me telling me, holy shit, you're asking the right questions. You get it. You get it. You understand. So he answers that question, a long form question, and he answers it. And after that, 
The camera turned off. He said, sir. He said, son, where are you from? I said, Texas. He said, I can fucking tell. Just like that. He said, I can fucking tell. He said, real recognizes real. And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> at that point, at that point is when I fucking lost it. I was just like, then his wife comes over and she's like, that's a fucking phenomenal hand. She's like, I can tell you're from Texas, blah, blah, blah. Starts talking to me. And I'm just like, okay, guys, look, uh, cat's out of the bag. I'm a fucking massive fan. I just, uh, and then we just have a conversation and we talk a little bit more after that. And he was just like, bro, just keep it what the fuck you're doing. He's like, I promise you in the next couple, four to five years, you're going to be something that people are talking about. And I just, I broke down and cried. I literally went to the bathroom and cried. Like, this is stuff that I didn't tell people about but it's because like this is major for me yeah as far as people who come from um a place where they don't feel accepted where you have growing up it was so hard to be black and in country wearing cowboy boots and blah 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 blah. as you get older you adapt to it but when you're growing up and you're younger that shit's hard yeah. getting called the n-word that's hard like i never knew how to take that and then like your teacher telling you are you sure you want to go into country music like, like this is stuff that I that I know is in the back of my head. An anti support, right? System. Yeah, like the, like so much hate, and then you finally get to that point. And I'm only 25, right? Yeah, I'm only 25, and I just interviewed this massive person to the country music scene that just told me that I'm doing everything I need to do to be where I am and where I'm gonna be. Amen. Yeah. Like, you think I need any more validation after that? No. Fuck that. Like, I'm no. good. It's, Cody it's Johnson? Almost, it's almost like, where do I go from here? Exactly. What do I do next? Man, and that that it's just crazy. right there just did it for me. Like, and then, like, now I know I'm just, I'm in the right spot. Hell yeah, it's man. Crazy, yeah, man. man. You're, I'm, it's crazy. You um, want, well, how does Pierre get in a room with Young Gravy? Shit. Um, because <laughs> I love Young Gravy. With the Trey Lewis crew, we're out on the road, we bump gravy. All the time. So we, we love that shit. I got this guy saved in my phone <laughs> as Clayton from Howdy, and I don't know how the fuck his content. Howdy as in like a co- is Howdy a company? The in the media company or whatever. Uh, okay, so Howdy Media. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I don't know how the fuck his number got saved in my phone. I have no fucking clue. But we talk all the time. He's a great guy, and um, you know, as an influencer, you get a lot of song deals and stuff. Like you have to do like song promotions and stuff like that, and. Uh, it's like, hey, man, you want to come do some stuff for uh, Mason Ramsey? I'm like, yeah, sure, man. I'll, I'll come out there. And uh, then I was like, can I bring my camera girl or whatever so I can, like, you know, get be- behind the scenes kind of stuff or whatever? He's like, no, because we're in Young Gravy space. And I was like, all right, bet. Cool. So funny thing is, like, I had to pick somebody up from the airport. And so they're fucking, like, their car, the wheel was flat or whatever, so I let him take my car. So I didn't have a way there. So I had to call a friend. I'm like, hey, can you, like, can I use your car? And my friend Jonathan, shout out to Jonathan. This guy's like, I don't know what the fuck Jonathan did to be as success, successful as he is, but he's like, yeah, man, take my car. And so I take his car to this fucking thing. And um, yeah, all the influencers are there and Young Gravy's there. And he's just a cool dude, man, like, just willing to do it. Tall motherfucker, yeah, right? Big as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> He's just willing to do whatever the influencers want to do. He was just like, the whole thing was about Mason, but like, he was just fucking willing to work with everybody, every influencer there, and he was just chill. I mean, it was right before a show, and he's just cool dude, man. But um, yeah, for everybody watching, that that's like, I'm not a big Young Gravy fan or anything, but it was just a cool situation to be in. <laughs> that's a big <laughs> I'm a Young Gravy guy, personally. Yeah. But um. But the, you had a couple of videos from that, like go, yeah, go boom too. Yeah, yeah. We one, uh, of, them, one of them I think was with Ella's song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing was about. Yeah, we did a cool video and like Clayton or whatever. You dressing him up was cool. That I mean, yeah. it was like Gravy's in Nashville. This is Pierre is one of the one of the Nashville style yeah. guys. He's you're yeah. putting the jacket on him. You're yeah. like, all right, now you can be in Nashville kind of thing. Yeah, that's how yeah. I took that, that video. Yeah, that was that's cool. exactly what it was. It was it's a like cool bit. it's kind of like you know, like passing the reins. You know, just. All right, like you're good, brother. Like you can ride now. Seal of approval. Yeah. <laughs> Pierre seal of approval. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was cool. I wish I could have got him in a cowboy hat, but he's like, not my hair, bro. Yeah. So- <laughs> <laughs> oh, you imagine him in, a, him in a fucking Stetson, bro? That would have been sick. That'd have been sick, man. That'd have been cool. So if so, like Kojo was like your big was probably one of the bigger ones that you've done with that that oh shit moment so if you're not a huge gravy guy have you had that oh shit moment yet so with funny, someone man i feel Who like that there? guy we did that dance video for um you remember that uh damn what was the song called you remember when we did the one it was uh flowers and um oh um 
What's his name? Oh my God! Take two to tango. I know yeah, the, two to that's tango. The song, the song yeah. Damn, I don't know the. I don't know his name. Whatever. But after we did that dance video, I go to Losers, and this is such a fucking. That's what I was cool, gonna say. I feel like this, this is, is such more, a cool story, this is man. More. This is such a cool fucking story. So, um, we do that video. We do that dance video, and it's a lot of fun. And we, this was like our first big kind of video. I, th- I feel like, yeah, maybe not for you, but for me, it was. Yeah. And um, so we go to Losers, and um. We're just kind of like celebrating. We didn't know what to do afterwards. And I was a weekend like cowboy, right? When it comes to drinking, like that's just how it is where I'm from. So I didn't really drink during the day until this like moment, you know? So I, I come in the bar and we're just sitting there and we're trying to get tables together and shit. And like this this older guy, like just old cool dude. Like if you're from North Carolina, you know, like we get drunk with old people. That's what you do. We just like, I swear to God. And like, you learn a whole life story. Exactly. You learn, bar, bar you learn bar, so bar, much bar drinking stories. with older guys, man, than you will from anybody. Yeah. And it's just the best time. You just get drunk with old people. So this old guy walks up to me. He's like, hey, man, I like your hat. And um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you too, man. What's your name? He's like, John Party. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, John, John Party ain't this old. And he's like, yeah, senior. <laughs> So it's uh it's John Party's dad. And um this guy Senior. this guy's just fucking awesome, man. And yeah. we just sit there and we drink and finally John Party comes over and this dude's big as fuck and I look up and I'm like, dude, like I'm a country music fan, but I'd like okay, so when I was in Korea, it ain't always the cowboy was one of my favorite songs. And I would play that in Korea they actually have honky tonks. They have two of them. And I would play them in the honky tonk and um so anyway, so I knew who John Party was, but I didn't know his face. So here's this big motherfucker, and I look up at him, and he's he's got like a, a fucking tray of like te- tequila shots. Oh, dude, like fucking, dude can throw them back. Yeah. It's like fucking like 15 of them on there. Yeah. And he's Sounds like, about right. You Checks want one? Out. So this is like my first John Party experience, because me and him do a shot, and um, I don't even know what the fuck happened after that. We just got drunk and had a good time. He drinks Michelob's, and I drink Michelob's, so we were just drinking Michelob's. And um, fucking we... He goes to the back room and, and Senior's still out there and me, me and him are uh, sitting there drinking and fucking talking to ladies and shit and there was another girl in the room, I'm not going to mention her name, but another big, really big influencer and shit and um, we're just having a damn good time. And I finally go back there with um, with Party and John Party, the young one, and um, we go, we're looking for the Moxie Hotel. It's like late as fuck at this point. Like I've been drunk with Senior all day. Like we're just <laughs> fucking turned up. Yeah. I've learned so much about this guy, man. Like, I I love I love John's dad more than I love John. Hell yeah. And so um, shout out to Senior. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Senior, man. And um, so I finally go back there, me and Senior, and um, John's like, let's go to the Moxie. And so his driver's name is Ernie. Ernie's is cool as fuck, man. And um, so we go to the the Moxie, and it's the wrong one. And we get there. <laughs> I didn't know there was two moxies in town, and uh, John's like, "Where the fuck are we at, Ernie? This ain't the goddamn one." <laughs> <laughs> so we um, so we get back in the truck, like fucking senior stumbles to the door because we're both fucked up, and um, so we get back in the truck and we go to the real moxie to meet uh, one of John's friends. But ever since then, John's been like my favorite country artist because I don't care about I don't care about who you are or who your music is, but that guy just showed me so much hospitality, man, that it. I can't deny him the right to be my favorite country artist. Yeah. He's just so fucking good. And ever since then, he's um, he's brought me out to like multiple shows and shit. Oh no shit! I've gotten to hang out with him, and I love Summer, his wife, and yeah. um, I just love that whole crowd, man. They're just good people. So I'd have to give it to him. No disrespect to Co Wetzel. I fucking love you, Co. Um, <laughs> have you partied with Co? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rowdy, me and Co stayed up till like five o'clock in the morning on the bus, just bullshitting. Yeah, um, him, and, him and Dre and those guys. Will yeah, do yeah, that. I love Dre too, man. I do. They're they're, they're yeah. at. We've done some runs with yeah. them with Trey with the Trey Lewis with our yeah. with me. nice little group right there. You talk <laughs> about you talk about a, a time and Sweet Boy can touch on this too. He uh, we the, the crews meshed meshed very well yeah. together. <laughs> I, was, I still have a scar on my wrist. <laughs> yeah, I, still got scars I jumped a jumped a fence. <laughs> yeah, but I love but, that crew, man. I really yeah. do. I love so, them. so talk about Nashville. What are some of y'all's favorite hangout spots? But I mean, not to the dance halls. Obviously, you guys enjoy doing the dancing stuff. Yeah. But like, if you were to say, if someone were to ask you, hey, hey, Pierre, hey, Rod, what's the best bar in Nashville? <laughs> You're gonna find me at Losers. 
Losers, that's yeah, your you're spot. Find me a loser, yeah. I guess it's going. I guess it's got to be Red Door. Red uh, for door. me, it's Red. It's for me, be Red door. for me, it's Live Oak, and I'm kind of biased because I'm I'm kind of on the payroll doing the rounds there. Yeah. But for me, I Red Door is just the the consummate like where I end up. Just I historic. Ended, I ended up at fucking Dogwood the other night because I'm si- I'm I'm recently single, so I'm back to critter crawling. Mm. So <laughs> I'm so I'm I'm out I'm out and about, and I ended up at damn Dogwood, and you hear you're in the boom boom room upstairs, and it's just uns, 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 and it's like. <laughs> Fuck this, man! I want to go have a cigarette at Red Door. <laughs> exactly. Like, I think shit. it like it like once you get more comfortable, you just want to chill. Like yeah. I mean, when I first moved here, it was like I want to be around the rowdy stuff and party until four a.m. at Losers and shit. But then it's like I'd rather just go get a beer at Red Door, dude. You see go, who's out. Dude, chat. But I feel like Losers is a chill spot for me. Like I go yeah. back there with uh fucking Tiffany or whatever, and, yeah. and um fucking get my drink and I'll, I'll sit there and chill man. in the back but in the back yeah. is cool you in know back, it's more yeah, chill yeah. Yeah, yeah in the back that that yeah. front of the front of losers is can get can and i can't wait it to see rowdy. what they do after the deck man oh after yeah i'm ready hardy, to see that hardy, hardy hardy and nikki t broke the bar yeah. you remember that yeah <laughs> i didn't funny. go i was on I was the, not I was on, I was on the road i was on the road that night i didn't go either but um but so what, what do we have for 2023 now we're coming up on the the end yeah. of this year this year's obviously been a big year of growth for for yeah. both of y'all but going into this next year like what are some for things me? people have to look forward to and with with the with the is it influencing country influence yeah, country influence, influence country yeah. i will so, say that is like on our goal to yeah we, we gotta need to get that better that. we need to yeah. get a little bit of better on that for the i definitely want to focus on next that. year yeah i think we got something good with that we just we've been i think we both been in agreement like we've got momentum we need to keep momentum for individuality real quick and then we'll come back and bridge the gap and kind of make that a thing because we are influencing country from both ends of the spectrum yeah and um i think in 2023 we're definitely gonna come back around for that for me individually individually there you go i think for me individually (laughs) it's gonna be focusing on trying to get that 36 acre farm back um not not back but Trying to get one and just focus on trying to do some jackpots, trying to get rodeo community out here. Because like I said before, man, there's, there's a lot of people saying yeehaw out here, but not a lot of yeehaw going on. It's a lot of fake cowboy hats. It's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people thinking this place is Western and it ain't Western. But you, So you want to bring some of that I want to bring Western here. I've talked to um, Randy Savvy from uh, Compton Cowboys and stuff about that, and we're kind of on the same page about it. We want to bring Western culture out here. We want to bring horses out here. We want to bring rodeos out here. That's what I want to happen in 2023, 2024, maybe. It's going to take some time, but yeah. I want to make this place actually yeehaw, man. It's that a lot of people saying awesome. it. It's a lot of people saying it, but not enough people doing it. Yeah. Hell yeah. I look yeah, I think to like that. you said, like with the brand is when we first started it, we knew that we needed to pave our way individually first because uh, we had clout going on, but it wasn't to the point where now we are. I no, I wouldn't say icons, but like in, inspiration. Yeah. You know, now it's to the point where yeah, people, inspiration. you know, people were like, because uh, I remember I came across a guy at Vegas, and he was like, "It was Pierre around. I, I want to wear the shirt for him." And I'm thinking like. You want to wear a shirt for another another guy, but just <laughs> just see, just seeing that like that's how inspiring what we got going on yeah. is. It's like yeah. this dude wants to wear a shirt for you, <laughs> so shit. But I think um, I think concluding this year, I think we've had made a pretty good stamp on who we are individually. So I think next year for sure, tapping in on the brand and taking that to new heights can really do some crazy crazy things to nashville in general but to, to the world but to the african-american community who doesn't feel like they can wear western stuff you know so i think the brand is one of my main focuses for next year but for me individually i want to get on a major market before 27 i'm trying to like and you know everybody says so you're off to a pretty pretty damn good yeah, start there right <laughs> i mean i'm saying like everybody says nashville's like a 10-year town um and I've only been here for like three. Well, it's, well, they've said it's a ten year town, and then the internet became what it's become, and yeah. I think that's expedited and that's changed it everything yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, so. you're right. Yeah, yeah. With the internet, it became a fucking two year town. Yeah, it can, it's all about how you. It's all about how and you. And how you. It's how you use your tools. Bust your ass. It's how you bust. Yeah. It's your. It's your work ethic. It's being a good person, and it's knowing how to use your tools and exactly. utilize utilize opportunities. And yeah. you guys are doing a great job of that. So yeah. I really appreciate you, you fellas, coming on for real. Yeah. Like this was this was a blast. I usually have like songwriters and artists, but I was like, I want to have guys that are that are in the community. Like I'm in the community. Don't don't write songs. Don't yeah. sing songs. Don't play an instrument. Yeah. But but in the scene. And yeah. uh, it was an absolute pleasure having yeah. you guys. Where can people go to 
go to find y'all on everything because I know TikTok's the big one, but you guys are on yeah. Insta too, and yeah. I'm sure on on do you guys on YouTube and shit? You guys doing like yeah. the YouTube shorts? And I, this, yeah. that, I am doing YouTube now. I'm the best dressed cowboy on YouTube. Hey, um, <laughs> is that the name of the account? Best dressed cowboy. Yeah, that's it. Hell yeah. Um, and then uh, Instagram is Pierre J Wilson, and then TikTok is uh, Pierre Gerard Wilson. So damn, yeah, you can difficult find me there. Ass. Pick one. <laughs> I should have made it simple, huh? <laughs> yes. Mine just Radio Rod everywhere with yeah. two D's at the end. Yeah, so, I don't have such a unique name. Hey, so funny story. Do you ever have an on air email where it was like Rodney Smith on air? Mm -mm. See, I I was always taught to have on air. So with my last name Beryl, oh, no. it looks like Brillionaire. Like I'm like, <laughs> it, so it looks, I'm like guys, it's Beryl on air, but it looks like Brillionaire. Like yeah. I was trying to spell billionaire yeah. with my last name. So mine's always simple. It's just Rodney Smith. Yeah, Rodney Smith and simple. Radio Rod. That's awesome. Yes, well, yeah. well, be sure to check out our uh, our friends right here, uh, Pierre Wilson, Rodney Smith. Um, be sure to be on the lookout for. Um, Influence is, I keep fucking it Influence up. Influence country. Influence, Influence country. country. Influence yeah. country. The big I see. Influence country. Um, and be sure to check out our fellas. Uh, you can probably find them at Red Door on any given night. Find any them at given night. And if you're here in Nashville, you're coming to Nashville, and you want to dance, you want to learn how to dance, you want to you want to show support for what these guys are doing, be sure to give them a follow. Shout out to our uh, friends uh, from Whale Tail Media, Saxman Studios. See you tonight. Or, uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Round two. Oh, you go, are you yeah. going there tonight? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. You guys are both going to be there tonight i'll be there oh dude yeah we're gonna sweet boy's gonna be there too and we'll gonna, celebrate dude it's <laughs> good yeah that's gonna we'll talk about that in a second <laughs> but uh thanks as always for checking out uh, the in the round podcast be sure you like rate subscribe share tell your mama and them and we will see y'all next time this has been the in the round podcast